Hello there and welcome to this week's edition of Eye on Port brought to you by Star Assurance, UT Logistics, the Royal Bank and Ghana Community Network Services. This week, a very important subject when it comes to port operations, safety in the port. Uh, at the recently held International Cargo Handling Conference held in Tema here, uh, there were a lot of talks about safety in the port. We're going to be exploring that with an expert. In the meantime, look behind me, folks. A lot of trucks carrying cargo parked on the shoulders of the road. The people of Tema are not happy about it. Even the port authority is not happy about it. The municipal assembly also in Tema, not happy about it. But who is responsible? How should the trucks be parking? Where should they park? Who takes responsibility? Let's explore that. Inadequate parking space around the industrial city of Tema is compelling many truck drivers to park trucks on the shoulders of road in the city, particularly the Tema port. Tema is the most industrialized city in Ghana. In addition to the presence of Ghana's largest and one of Africa's busiest ports, the Tema port, many industries, both local and international, are all located in Tema. In view of this development, the presence of heavy truck transporting goods in and around Tema is a common characteristic in the city. Unfortunately, there aren't many available parking spaces for these trucks in the city. Recently, the Ghana Port Authority has completed the paving of its transit truck parking yard and its surroundings. But this alone is not enough to accommodate the thousands of trucks that transport goods from the port to various destinations. This development has led to the haphazard manner in which articulated trucks have been parking on the shoulders of the streets of the industrial city in Tema. <laughs> The truck drivers registered their displeasure at the failure of the city authorities to provide them a parking lot. They complained of theft of car parts and accessories by some unscrupulous persons. Almost every available space around the port of Tema has been turned into a parking lot for articulated trucks which have come to fetch cargo. The Tema port is to be expanded four times its current size, which is expected to increase traffic to 2.2 million TEUs in the next 10 to 15 years. We see the port expansion coming, and that should necessitate the need for provision for the tracks. You cannot have a port without a haulage sector. The Ghana Port Authority is planning to have a large truck park around the Ashaman area, but the authority insists the Tema Metropolitan Assembly should take the responsibility to construct truck parks. The TMA, however, admits the need to develop a parking space for the large number of haulage trucks doing business in the city. The TMA says it will intensify collaborative efforts with Ghana Ports to find a lasting solution to the menace. As a city authority, we ought to be smart, we ought to think ahead and ensure that whilst the port is expanding, even though it is the port's responsibility to provide a turnkey port services, the city must support, the city must create an enabling environment for that uh, port expansion that has been conceived to happen. He adds that the assembly has identified some lands to be developed into a park. We've also identified pockets of land. In some cases, we are trying to scale up other social services to free other land so that we can use those lands, those freed lands for parking to support the port activities. 
he said the assembly was also coming out with a tax force to ensure that at least trucks did not endanger the lives of other road users. What we'll be doing will be to, in the short term, ensure that any available space that can be used will be used. We would also ensure that the trucks park appropriately, even though they are parking on the shoulders of the road, the, 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 the activities must not endanger any other road user. Well, so we hope that the Municipal Assembly will cooperate with the necessary agencies uh, that be to ensure that we get a very uh, good parking space for some of these truckers to avoid some of the issues that were raised in that piece there. In the meantime, there was an accident involving some of these trucks. One cargo fell on another truck. Bizarre. Take a look. No casualty was recorded when an articulated truck with registration number GE261112 carrying two cargo containers fell over a stationary truck with the registration number GT7136C also carrying a cargo container around the Safebourne terminal and the Tema container terminal area in Tema. Eyewitnesses attributed the accident to the poor nature of the road and the failure of authorities to tow faulty trucks carrying containers. Yeah, it happened, yeah, happened, yeah, happened yeah, yeah, yeah. around yeah, yeah. 3 o'clock. Yeah, nice. They haven't done anything about it, uh, so this one is trying to maneuver. You see, see the pavement. This will happen. Wait, oh, this is the fourth time yeah, that yeah. I saw a container, yeah. I mean, fell down. So this is not the first time. One of the containers fell on the head of the stationed trailer, hence damaging it beyond repairs. Well, in, away from the inadequate parking spaces around uh, the port and even the Tema, uh, the port city, also the accident involving those trucks and the cargoes here and there, I sat down with an expert as far as safety in and around the port is concerned, he was the trainer for the two-day seminar for the International Cargo Handling Association Conference held in Tema to ask him, how can we make our port safe? And also, what's his assessment of the ports of Ghana? Please, enjoy. What are some of your experiences work, working within the West African environment? I think you have some challenges, but you have some big opportunities also. So the, the, the key, I suppose, is to make sure that you are in the good position to take advantage of those opportunities because if you don't your competitors in the region will be there first and the theme of the two ports is, is a bit different you're going more to containerization in Tema and more and now to the oil and gas industry in Takaradi so they are complementary in many respects but you have to make sure that everything else is in place it's not just the investment and the development in the port it's also the investment and development of the hinterland and the infrastructure and also the skills of the people and the ability. I think you have the grace and the willingness from the government and the people to succeed. You just need to put the other things in place. And what are the other things in your The other things are basically the, the skills and the, and the awareness are there. You just need to make sure you develop people's potential to its fullest capacity. And that can start from the simple things we have been talking about for the last two days, like basic health and safety awareness through to plant operating, driver skills, making sure the management and supervisory skills are in place to get the best out of the resources. But you also need to make sure the government is helping with the necessary investment in infrastructure. We saw when we visited the port of Tema, it's a fantastic port and an awful lot of cargo is moving in and out, which means you have a lot of trucks yeah. and there is a lot of congestion in the port and on the roads. So the investment in infrastructure is also going to be very important for, for Ghana to progress. Look around the port of Temam, look around the port of Takrade. Do you think, honestly, that we're matching up standards? I think if you are to compare yourselves with the best port developments in the world, no, you are not there yet, no. There is some distance to travel. You have the cargo, you have the cargo potential going forward, but you need to improve some of the basic things. And some, like of, the, some of those basic things are just sorting out the area a little better. Maybe the traffic flow around the terminal could improve without costing too much money. You have to suit the local conditions. Everything is different in every part of the world. So you have to suit your local uh, trading conditions, 
your working arrangements with your localized whatever you That's you right. think it's sometimes one of the simple ideas is to have a port community association which we do the we ports of ghana do have uh, well, the port community good. association I, I didn't know that uh, one deals with the policy aspect that's the port advisory committee good. deals with the policy aspect and the port community association deals with the basic stuff that are confronting the port on daily basis and regular basis well that's that's good that's a good place to start you need to make sure the agenda for those meetings focuses on the basic things that need to change and not to worry too much about the high level stuff that will come later but you need to fix the, the on the ground you mentioned yourself on the ground the on the ground stuff is very important sorting out some of the localized congestion it will be difficult for Ghana Ports Authority to fix the problems on the road between Tamar and Accra but you can fix the stuff that is in your own Within control. The, in your presentation, you mentioned you went to the port of Tema, you see trucks parked outside and on the shoulders of roads and all. And inside and all over and the place. Inside yeah. and all the place. What would be your advice in, in such a situation? Even though I must state that we've just completed a paved yard. For yes, transit the transit trucks. yard. That's You've a good. That. That's a good progression. Yes. Good. And you can also see on the new container terminal developments, everything is going to be more ordered. Mm -hmm. And this is also important. You have With the reefer yard? Yeah, the reefer yard is fantastic. So I think you have to go back to the planning. And you have to look at the basic layout of the port and decide this area is focused on this operation. This area we focus on this operation. And keep them separate and try to reorganize the flow of trucks so you can create some more space inside the existing port. If you talk about automating the port, we all know that if you automate, a lot of things become easier. You give less room for people, human discretion and all of that. But before I ask you what you think we can do as a developing country, uh, let's take a listen to the board chairman of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, uh, who is a political figure, and he, he, made, made, a very he made a very good speech, uh, but also raised a very important political question as far as automation is concerned. Later. Take a listen. When we visited the, uh, the Rotterdam port, uh, we saw that virtually everything had been uh, automated. Uh, those of us in Africa, we are a bit frightened by the increasing rate of automation because of the issue of unemployment. And so as you've met here to discuss, you know, containerization in Africa, please hasten slowly on automation. Otherwise, when our ports are not open for an em employment by our youth, you know what will happen. So even though we encourage automation, I'm saying that let us hasten slowly. But what I saw elsewhere, if we bring it here, that means that everybody will leave the port and uh, one person will be sitting by the computer and directing and containers will be moving up and down and our people will not get any job to do. You heard the board chairman of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority uh, raising that issue of labor employment that once has begun this automation work, uh, we had a lot of concerns from the freight forwarders, uh, clearing agents, you know, thinking that they're going to be out of jobs. How do you combine the two uh, as you seek to automate uh, and also seek to engage people in employment? Like I mentioned in one of the, the sessions upstairs, life is a compromise. You have to find a balance of the right amount of automation compared with the right amount of labor interaction. Then you, so first of all, you have to examine why do you want to automate? What would be the, what are you trying to achieve with automation? Usually it's about productivity and efficiency. Uh, I mentioned upstairs the most productive terminal in the world, APMT Yokohama. There is no automation, only on the data side. There is no mechanical automation whatsoever. I see. And they are the best terminal in the world I see. for productivity. How, how did they achieve that? It's just by organize, electronics. organizing the people and organizing the process. Does that mean they have a lot of people working or still? No, they're just working efficiently. And they have very good uh, computer systems to plan the operation. So the operation is planned automatically, but then the people carry out their tasks manually and they drive all the equipment themselves. But they have achieved this efficiency just by organization. So you don't necessarily have to use robots no, to no, carry containers. No, no. You can still let humans drive and achieve good productivity. Achieve yes, so you can learn lessons from other ports. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's already there. So if you want to go to full automation, you can look at uh, Mass Flactor 2 mm -hmm. in Rotterdam. We don't have the productivity figures yet. But one thing for sure, it will be less than Yokohama. The most automated terminals are not the most productive on the ship. That's good to learn. But they are the most productive in the yard 
the yard is where automation is really scoring because moving the containers in and out of the import and export stacks and transferring them to the road trucks is one of the slowest operations where we have the most congestion and potentially the most mistakes. So automating that side is probably the first step when most countries, new countries, developing countries, in, in this think case, about it. The, the clearance areas, yes. you know, processes yes. people yes. would have to go through yes. to clear their goods That's and all right. of that. That's where you think that automation should take place. Automation, the data process, yes. is very important. Every terminal should do that. But you can still have manual operations for everything else. Once you organize the data and the data flow, the rest starts to happen. So you concentrate on the, the easy to fix things. So I know you are putting in a TOS system from Navis anyway. Yeah. This is a big start because from there you will see, it will start to highlight where are the deficient areas, where are the areas you need to improve. And you just take one step at a time. And you don't have to sack everybody and put robots in the port. Give a final advice to the port community in Ghana, the port community within the West African Sahara region and maybe the continent. Keep concentrating on the good things that you do. You are doing a lot of good things already. And then just try to work on, the, on, on some of the negative stuff, but you cannot fix everything overnight. You have to take it one step at a time. And remember the message from uh, the Lieutenant Colonel, who is your head of safety and security. He said, do the simple things. Don't try to overcomplicate everything. And make sure what you do suits your local conditions. Don't forget the big shipping companies, they are used to a world scenario and they have standards that they see in Yokohama and Rotterdam and Australia and they want to have a level playing field across the world. That suits them, it doesn't necessarily suit Ghana. So then you have to compromise with them and you have to do the things that are locally good for you and suit your culture and your conditions and the, the um, shall we say, the parameters you have to work within because they are unique to you. So don't try to achieve what is unachievable, set out your agenda set out what you want to achieve, look at what you would like to do, look at where you are now, so the gap analysis, and then think about what are the easiest things to do to move us a little bit closer to the outcome. Thank you, but don't try to fix it overnight, it'll never happen. Well, a lot of food for thought there for all of us who are into the international trade business and also the port uh, industry. I'm sure that we've learnt a lot uh, from the expert's opinion there. Away from him, though, there is also another expert, uh, uh, professor of economics and also port operations expert who is well versed in the affairs of Port of Africa. She's advising uh, the entire Port of Africa to focus on efficiency and not be so much particular about expanding space. Another thing about port in Africa, and in general, I say I can say that uh, every port, every port would to to want to be to be big, but I think this is not necessary. I spoke in this day about the short sea shipping. I, I think it's a good idea for the port in Africa to be a small, efficient port, not big port, no efficient, and no, we don't have a cargo for every port, every big port in, in Africa. So I think you, you have to specialize in a small, efficient port. Very small, but very efficient. Another lesson to be learned there. Iron Pod returns shortly after the break. Star Assurance, creating smiles since 1985. Let go. Let's celebrate 30 years of solid partnership. Star Assurance, your solid partner. I'll take care of you. There's a place in my heart that makes me feel that you're the one. It's a place I want to be, because satisfaction guarantee. From strength to strength, you help me grow, because you're there for me. And teach me how to be independent Cause you, you The Royal Bank The Royal Royal Bank The Royal Bank Thank you with transparency Commitment to integrity The Royal Bank The Royal Royal Bank The Royal Bank The Royal Bank
Real Bank. Real banking, real difference. UT Logistics have come to stay. Um, when when you, you approach a job like the way we approach it, each job is unique. Uh, each client is unique. We provide the best um, service in the, in, the, in, in the system. We have best um, staff. We are very fast, we are quick, and we save customers a lot of, um, a lot of money. And coming up next are news and activities happening in and around the port industry. The Ghanaian shipping industry has welcomed the International Maritime Organization guideline regarding the verified gross mass of containers carrying cargo, which is expected to take effect from 1st July 2016. The IMO guideline, which is also expected to regulate safety at sea and the ports, will ensure that containers are verified before they are loaded on board a vessel. Francis Mensa Abrampa, technical advisor to the Ship Owners and Agents Association of Ghana, SOAG, said the new regulation will go a long way to ensure safety in the maritime industry. This will be a basis to ensure that when a plan or voyage, a storage plan is being made by the shipping lines, the weight that have been declared can be relied on. When implemented, the VGM will avert issues such as death to crew workers, ship instability, incorrect vessel storage, and ship damage. A member of the Ship Messaging Developers Group, Emmanuel Odata, says the verified gross mass will also ensure that the appropriate equipment is used in lifting the right containers because it has been verified and the exact weight is known. We have been speaking with the shippers ship owners and they are very forthcoming they are also interested and it's really uh, in, in reality we are all ready to go The Security Department of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA, has honored deceased personnel who passed away whilst in active service. Acting General Manager of Administration of GPHA called on port security personnel to remain committed to making Ghana's ports the safest in the West and Central African sub-region. The ports of Ghana are known as the most peaceful and the most secure ports in, in West Africa. A key ingredient in determining this was not only the efficiency of the port, but also the peace that the, the port uh, enjoys. And to say that all this is due to the hard work and the loyalty and dedication that you attach to your work. The port security manager said it is imperative for port security personnel to give of their best in the discharge of their duties. They need to be a bit more dedicated to their duty and the sacrifices that they make in line of uh, protecting um, both life and property in the precincts of the port would not go in vain or unnoticed. Every year, 11th November is set aside to remember all who died in line of duty for the cause of humanity and in furtherance of domestic and foreign policy objectives. Star Shirts, creating smiles since 1985. Let go, let's celebrate 30 years of solid partnership. Star Shirts, your solid partner. I'll take care of you. Thank you with transparency, commitment to integrity. The Royal Bank, the Royal Bank, the Royal Bank. 
Real banking, real difference. We've all had stories about, about, about ports, about you know, um, difficulties and challenges at the port. We think that to bring transparency to the port is very important for both the end consumers and even the people, some of the, the, the agents who work within the port. This program is very, very critical and I think everybody who is involved in the port, in businesses that has impact on the port one way or the other should make it a point to, 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 to view it. Schedules of vessels sitting in the port, those at Anchorage, those also expected for the coming week, plus the Bank of Ghana approved exchange rates. Next. Your comments and queries next on the screen. Vivian Ankara from Tema says, Iron Port. I am worried about the numerous trucks that are parked at the shoulders of the roads around the port. Tell the authorities to do something about it. Sure, Vivi, I'm certain the authorities have heard you. Francis from La Paz texted, I want employment as a truck driver in the port. Well, Francis, I'm reliably informed the port is not yet recruiting, but do look out in the dailies for any search opportunities. That's it for this edition of Ion Port. I hope that I have been able to bring some activities happening in around the port to you and also you closer to the port. Uh, thank you for watching. Also, thanks uh, a lot to Isaac Bosu, also Joe Lavo, and uh, Godwin Kabute. The executive producer for the program is Paul Asariansan. Thanks also to Solomon Anderson and Portia Bura.